Good morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome to morning prayer for the morning of Monday, September the 11th. And this is Right One Monday. You'll notice a few things a little bit different about the setup. Uh, for one thing, I don't have my tea set out today, and, uh, but I do have a goblet of lemonade that I brought back, well, the goblet I brought back from Israel. And so what I'm sort of telling you is that this, uh, we are now beginning to record after I've returned from my trip. Last week were still episodes that we had recorded ahead so that I would have time in case the flight was delayed or had any problems or, and to give me time to unpack, to get all my laundry done, um, to get over the jet lag and all that kind of thing. So we we're picking back up again. And so we're gonna do some things. Um, for example, in today's reading, I'm going to, for the, in the meditation time, I'm going to link the reading with some things that you would see in Jerusalem. So stay tuned for that. And at the moment, this is Right One Monday, so let's get started. Today we are praying not only for the situation in Ukraine, but we are praying for all those who are living with occupation and war. In the Anglican Communion today, we're praying for the Diocese of Zululand in the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. And today is the final, um, the, the diocese is the final diocese in the Anglican Communion prayer cycle. And the cycle takes, I think, two years to do, to complete. And so we have completed the cycle. Tomorrow we will begin the cycle over again with a diocese starting with A. So there you are. In our own diocese this week, we're praying for St. Matthews in Kennedy and St. Matthews in Universal City. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for David and David, our bishops, and for Mike and Allie, our priests. And as always, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. So let's get started. Let's begin on page 40. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. And on page 41, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of His Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open Thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth Thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. And on page 44, let's say the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh. For he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. 
worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. We have two psalms today. Uh, we have Psalm 41 and Psalm 52. But I think we'll do Psalm 41 on page 641. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He is taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's go to our readings. We are going to begin the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Um, and we're going to begin with chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read through verse 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle for today is the first song of Isaiah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Sion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In our Gospel reading, in the Gospel of St. Mark, we're going to read about the burial of Jesus. Um, and I want you to remember what we're reading here because I'm going to show you during the reflection time um, what we saw in Jerusalem and actually something that we saw in Bethlehem, come to think of it. 
we, I don't know really how we visualize or how you would visualize the tomb where Jesus was laid and where the resurrection took place. So I'm going to show you some pictures, not of the inside of it, but I'm going to show you pictures of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which is also called the Church of the Resurrection. And I'm going to show you uh, pictures. I know you've probably seen these. Uh, we chose some photos to show you that I sent home while I was in um, Israel. But I want to very specifically show you where in the Church of the Resurrection that um, you can go and you can, you can put your hand on the stone where it is believed that Jesus was laying and from which he resurrected. But I also want to show you what a tomb in those days would look like because it's very different from how we visualize it. Um, I have to admit I was uh, very surprised to see how it was. So let's read the story of the burial of Jesus. Uh, we're in St. Mark, um, chapter 15. We're actually going to end chapter 15. We're going to begin with verse 40 and go through the end, which is uh, verse 47. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle for today is the Song of the Redeemed. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let's say suffrages A on page 55. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care 
and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. And our collect for today is the collect for proper 18 on page 181. Grant us, O Lord, we pray thee, to trust in thee with all our heart, seeing that as thou dost always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so thou dost not forsake those who make their boast of thy mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on page 57, the Collect for Guidance. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 58, let's say our prayer for mission. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee, bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 59, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, in our moment of reflection, um, as I say, I want to show you both, at least the outside of the empty tomb in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, our Church of the Resurrection. But I also want to show you a tomb which would be uh, contemporary of the one that Jesus was buried in, or was laid in. This tomb is actually in Nazareth, and we were very fortunate to be able to see it because it is not open like on your general tours. So this, this was something very special. It is also thought to be the tomb where St. Joseph, no, stepfather, shall we say, of Jesus was buried. And so this is near what is thought to be the family home in Nazareth. So um, what I want to tell you about how a tomb would have been set up then. Israel is very much limestone. Um, if you are with us here, if you're part of the deck congregation here in South Texas, the land is somewhat similar because it's very much limestone here. And we have caves, natural caves here, quite a few of them. And that was very common then. And so tombs would be hewn into, or start with a cave, or be hewn into limestone rock that was otherwise not suitable for building. And so um, the tomb would consist of a room, a main room, if you will. So think of, think of your hand, and think of this area of the hand as being the, the room where the body would be prepared. And then there would be these fingers going off. So, kind of like that. These fingers going off from this main room. And these were, um, they're dug into the rock and they were like body-sized little cavities that come off of these, this main room. And here, like at the base of my palm, would be an opening into this. And in front of this opening would be a round stone. And the stone would be shaped um, to look like, shall we say, a very large wheel. So it's not just a rock, it's a very large wheel. And that stone would be rolled in front of here. So the body would be brought here in this room to be prepared. And then when it was prepared, the, you know, been anointed with the spices and, and wrapped in the cloth, it would be put into one of these fingers. Now, 
according to the story, Joseph of Arimathea had one of these tombs and had it never been used. Um, and they did reuse tombs, so after a body had decayed, the bones would be removed and put into an ossuary, and then the niche would be reused. But this tomb had never been used. Okay. So when the body of Jesus was taken down from the cross, it was getting to be sunset on, on Friday, which is um, sunset on Friday is the beginning of the Jewish Sabbath or Shabbos. And so the women did not have time to prepare the body. So basically what they did or would have done was to have brought it here into this area and just laid it there, uh, kind of covered in a cloth, and then they would have gone home for the Shabbos. And then after the Shabbos, they would have come back intending to prepare the body, place it in one of these niches, and then the niche would have been, I forgot to say this, the niche would have been sealed off until the body had decayed. Okay, so hopefully you're with me. <laughs> So I'm going to show you a tomb. Um, there's nothing in it, but this tomb is actually technically in Nazareth, but it is a true, it had been used tomb that was contemporary of Jesus, and this would have been like the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, where he would have been buried. So, hope you enjoy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.